screw it. EM wants to remove her son from lessons? Fine, he's out. Alex contacted EM and told her the good news and also warned that he would not be allowed to rejoin the group when he had recovered from his injury. EM suddenly was very polite and civil again and accepted the news happily of course. I'm sure you can guess what happened next. Several weeks pass, little Daniel's collarbone got better. Guess who immediately contacted Alex to demand that he be allowed back into the group for lessons? EM of course. Initially Alex flat out refused. It was what EM wanted after all. But again, after some classic EM temper tantrums and also Alex feeling sorry for Daniel, he was a decent kid. Daniel was allowed back into the group. He was, as Alex had warned EM, very behind and struggled to catch up to the rest of the group lesson. But he was happy to be back and Alex was happy to have him there. I never did find out if anything happened after that, but it seems that EM did have a bit of a reputation with the teachers for similar such antics. Honestly, it does seem a bit much to have to commit to a full year of lessons. I mean, what if the group lessons aren't working for your kid and you want to get a private tutor instead? So that part of it at least I think's unreasonable. I think you should be able to quit whenever you want. The problem is she did sign a contract and I understand why there is some sort of a commitment there. You can't have a kid leave and then come back in and they're just not at the same level as everyone else. It's either gonna slow everyone else down or it's not gonna be worth it for the kid anyway. So this doesn't happen often but I'm actually mixed on this one. Just sitting in on a lesson is definitely not gonna be the same as actually being able to fully participate. I feel like there should be some sort of clause that if there's some accident and you're gonna fall behind in the classes and you're not gonna get the full value out of them, you shouldn't have to commit to the end of the year. But at the same time, you shouldn't then be expected to be able to rejoin whenever you like because you're just gonna be behind everyone else. So I don't agree with the entitled parent, but I don't think I agree with the music teacher either. I think there should have been some sort of compromise in the middle. Now my first job was as a pizza delivery boy for Domino's and I've had my fair share of Karens but this one is probably my favourite one because not only did I get the last laugh but it gave me a level of respect for my manager let's call him James, that I never thought I would have. Our glorious story begins in a famous city in Australia, and I was working. Duh. Now I have Asperger's syndrome and I have a hard time looking people I don't know in the eyes, and because of this I accidentally created a habit where I tell new people, sorry for not looking directly at you, I have Asperger's syndrome. And my boss James is a jerk and doesn't take crap from anyone, but is very understanding about my situation, and is strict but fair to his staff and will always stand up for them. Now on with the story. As mentioned, I was a pizza delivery boy for Domino's for about two years and I have met many Karens. Some asking for discounts, some saying the pizza was cold even though it's not, and some even asking why I, an 18 year old, am working at Domino's and not working in a real job. But I digress. None of these Karens could compare to this Fitch. Not only was this Fitch worthy of a story to my future grand children, but it is probably the worst and best experience of my life so far. Anyway, so we received a delivery order for a large pepperoni pizza and three small cokes. Five minutes had passed and this woman called again to ask, why is my pizza taking so long? Or where is my pizza? So after about 20 minutes, the pizza was finished. I got the drinks and hopped in my car and drove off to deliver. After about 10 minutes, I made it to the evening evil slimy lair of our soon to be Karen. I knocked on the door and out came this ogre that even Shrek wouldn't find attractive. She looked at me and I said, hello, sorry if I'm not looking directly at- She cut me off and said, freaking finally, I've been waiting for hours for this. I was taken aback as I'm not used to confrontation of this manner. I started breathing heavily but quickly pulled out my fidget spinner to calm down. Yes, I use a fidget spinner even after they went out of style. Don't judge me please. She then said, um, hello, are you listening to me? Trying to make eye contact with me. I eventually composed myself and said, I'm sorry, I have Asperger's syndrome and I don't feel comfortable with looking directly at people. She scoffed and said, why the frick are they letting we does work. Maybe because they feel guilty. This is disgraceful. 
Maybe if your parents didn't vaccinate you, you wouldn't be a pathetic retard who doesn't know how to do things. Now I was ticked. Not only was she insulting me, but she was insulting people like me. The people that either can't defend themselves or are too socially awkward to do anything. I screamed. I have Asperger's because I was born with it, not because of a freaking vaccine. Who the frick do you think you are, a doctor? You're just a big, blubbery whale of a woman. If anything, you're pathetic. I was visibly fuming with rage, and she said, How dare you speak to me like that? I'm going to call your manager and get you fired. Now, what this Karen didn't know was that a few months ago before this moment, I was accused of something I didn't do. I might post the story if you like, but this in turn made it so that I vowed to always record my interactions with people when it came to big social things. Obviously not always, but when I felt it was necessary, and this was one such moment, I had recorded everything. Oh, but our story continues, because not only did I do something that surprised even me, but made me feel pretty good about myself, I opened her pizza and gave it to her and said, enjoy your food miss. She responded, Don't try and sweet talk me boy, you're fricked, absolutely fricked. My response, I pulled out all three of her small cokes and dropped them on the ground saying, oops, sorry, my bad, and walked away. She screamed something about me being a retard and a terrible employee. Once I got into my car, I began to cry. I was crying more than I ever had, but I managed to compose myself and get back to work. My manager called and simply said, give me the recording. I gave it to him and cried again. One of my co-workers came in and hugged me to calm me down. He heard the recording and said, I thought something like this happened. It's okay, you're not in trouble. Obviously I do not condone the language you used, but I understand. Don't worry, you're not in trouble. My co-worker told me I should be proud of myself for sticking up to people like that. Word got around fast there. I left about three months later to pursue a DJ career and I've never looked back, but I always enjoyed working there and the rest as they say is history all right before we talk to the story just a mini shout out to Domino's here okay I don't know what you have done to ruin your pizzas recently I think you must have shortened the time that you send the pizzas through the ovens to try and race as many pizzas through as possible but like every time I order a Domino's pizza now I have to turn on my oven anticipating I am going to receive a doughy mess no joke like you will stick your finger in the pizza and it is doughy so I don't know what you're doing differently but stick your pizzas in the oven for the right amount of time and actually cook the pizza. Sorry, I had to get that off my chest, but I know I'm not the only one who's feeling that pain. Okay, when she said she was waiting for hours for her pizza, we've all had a late pizza before, like that's standard practice, right? But I can't imagine a single scenario where a pizza would be hours late. I just don't know why these Karens have to always over-exaggerate. If it was 30 minutes late, just say it's 30 minutes late, that's bad enough. But yeah, good on pizza delivery, boy for recording it. Sounds like that's something that you're gonna need to do from now on. I mean, who knows when you're going to encounter an entitled person like that, right? Always better to be prepared and defend yourself. My baby cousin, who grew up with my children, lives next door to us with his wife and three small children, ages four, two, and three weeks. We are a very close family. He's only 20 years old, but is a wonderful, responsible young man. Last weekend, his wife's father asked to have the oldest grandchildren over for a few days to visit. With the virus and everything, they were obviously a little wary of letting their son go somewhere without them, where they couldn't keep him clean and safe. I should add, they've had boundary issues with his grandfather in the past, as he always seems to think his wants and needs trump those of the babies or anyone else for that matter. Anyway, they had a long talk with him about whether anyone in the home was or had been ill, or been in contact with anyone who was ill. He insisted they had all been home and safe and were still isolating. They went over the rules about not taking him out in public and wearing a mask if they absolutely have to go anywhere. He assured them they would be fine. Cue their son coming home on Monday. He is his normal self but has a stuffy nose, then a cough. 
Two days later, he is lethargic, nauseous, coughing, and has a stuffy nose. They separate him from his siblings, but it's too late, and they too are now sick. He called the grandfather to ask if anyone else in the house was sick, and is told that yes, everyone in the house has been sick for over a week. He said he didn't tell them because he knew they wouldn't let him take the boy over, and he was tired of not being able to see his grandson. He insisted it was just a normal flu, and he would have caught it anyway at preschool. The virus is a hoax, etc. He flipped his lid on the guy, as did his wife, and he is, temporarily at least, banned from contacting them or seeing the kids due to his constant poor judgment. Regardless whether they have a flu or a virus, he knew darn well there was a newborn in the house, and because of him, that newborn is going to be tested for the virus. The whole family has to go. We are all waiting to hear the results and are staying in just in case. Since we we've been in contact with them. We only heard about what happened this afternoon. I still can't believe the gall of this man to put his children at risk just so he could have a visit. Regardless on how you feel about the effectiveness of lockdowns, masks, etc, trampling on someone else's precautions to keep them and their family safe is not okay. Especially when there's a three week old baby. They're a vulnerable being in the world even when there isn't a pandemic. If he was worried about visitations before, he's going to be a lot more